Knock it off. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you. And you are with me. Two of the most interesting books in the Bible are the books of Daniel and Revelation. They're interesting uh, on their own terms. They're also interesting because people have used these books in an unusual way in the, in the modern period. These books are both called apocalypses. Uh, an apocalypse was an ancient literary genre in which a visionary, a, a prophet, a seer, would have a set of visions uh, that are very peculiar and odd, full of symbolism, very weird, hard to understand, uh, and even the visionary doesn't understand them. In these, in these apocalypses, you always have an angel standing by to explain to the seer what it is he's just seen, because this, the imagery is so bizarre and strange. Uh, we don't have books like that in our world very often. We have science fiction novels, and we accept them as science fiction novels, but we really don't have this, this form of the apocalypse, which was a common form in the ancient world. When people today read these apocalypses, they often misread them, as if these apocalypses are predicting things in our own future. But ancient apocalypses weren't meant to be talking about what's going to be happening in 2,000 years uh, hence. They're meant to be talking to people of their own day. The book of Daniel and the book of Revelation may seem strange to us, but it's because they're the only two apocalypses we're familiar with. Ancient people would have read lots of apocalypses and would have understood how these apocalypses are functioning. They're functioning to provide hope because they're all about how there are wicked forces in charge of this world that God is going to overcome if you just hold on, if you just keep the faith. And so the point of these books is for people to keep the faith for a little while so that God can destroy the forces of evil and bring in a good kingdom on earth. They're not predicting what's going to happen in our own future. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Was Jesus an apocalypticist? Part of the problem of thinking about Jesus as an apocalyptic thinker and player is that Jesus' expectations of the kingdom of God coming about never happened. When you ask the question, was he an apocalypticist, what you probably mean is, was he expecting a decisive judgment? And if you take the Gospels at face value, he certainly was. This is something he predicted. One of the strange ironies is that even though scholars have thought this for over a century, it hasn't trickled down to the pop general population. Uh, most people don't know that this is what scholars have been saying about the historical Jesus. One of the great movies of the 1920s, The Silent Ben-Hur. That's Jerusalem. It's a model. The Jewish people who lived in Palestine, where, where Jesus was, had been subjected to foreign rule for centuries. Even though in their own scriptures, God had promised to give the land to them. If God promised us the land, why don't we have the land? And who are these people who are ruling over us? believe that your God is the supreme God, but nonetheless his people keep getting beaten up. This creates cognitive dissonance.
They're developed within Israel about 150 years before Jesus, this worldview that scholars have called apocalypticism. These Jewish apocalypticists thought they were living at the end of time. Things were just as bad as they could possibly be. There are wars, there are rumors of war, there are earthquakes, there are famines, there are drought, there's pestilence. Things are terrible now. But God is soon going to intervene. It's right around the corner. Uh, this appears to be what many Jews thought in the days of Jesus. It's what the people who produced the Dead Sea Scrolls believed. It's what Jesus appears to have believed. And when is this going to happen? Jesus says to his disciples, some of you standing here won't taste death before they see the kingdom of God having come in power. On May 21, this generation will not pass away before all these things take place. My, my. Before another week passes by, it'll be all over. Uh, and so Jesus was an apocalypticist like other Jews of his day.